Hey, what is good everybody? Adam here and today I wanted to share with you guys a little pointer on creating displacement maps for real-time uh, render engines. So I'm going to be using D5 Render, but this would work for Enscape or Lumion as well. Um, these render engines use a type of displacement called parallax displacement, which isn't a true displacement um, of the geometry where it's actually moving vertices, but it's more of a um, displacement at the level of the texture. So it's a little more of an illusion, but um, it's a little bit tricky to get a good displacement map to drive displacement for parallax um, displacement. So you can't just straight away drop a uh, texture image into something like Crazy Bump and spit out um, a displacement map that's going to work well. You need to kind of uh, create a displacement map that's going to be specific to um, the areas that you want to displace. Like in this case, I'm working with this veneer texture. So I want to create a map that's going to recess all of this mortar joint here, the concrete between the stones. So I want to set that back and have the stone pop forward. Now, I did create a displacement map straight away in um, Crazy Bump, and I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, let me resend the scene over. All right, so let's take a look at what the um, original normal map that I just threw in and, and generated automatically looks like here. All right, so here's what we're working with. Not great. Um, some of the stones go in, the joint comes out in some spots. It's just kind of creates like more of a waviness to the wall itself instead of giving it the depth. So I did also create a, let's see, um, I think this was the displacement that was generated out of Crazy Bump. So this is what you get when you just kind of throw that that texture in and just generate automatically um, your maps. So as you can tell, both of those are very much crap. So what I did was I took the texture into Photoshop and I needed to um, first isolate the joint from the stone. So in order to do that, I went in with the magic wand tool and I adjusted this tolerance. And what you need to do is kind of find the sweet spot. So you'll see if I go down to 12 here, um, I'm missing huge sections of joint here that it's not really picking up. I have to kind of hold um, shift and go through and select various spots you know that's not too bad actually um, you can see that I ended up settling on 14 and that basically gave me a one-click solution I did have to go in and do a little bit of cleanup in some stones like this um, where I'll essentially take the lasso tool and hold alt and just kind of go around and trace out anywhere, especially where the stone is a similar color to the um, the grout, right? So, because that's, that's basically what the magic wand tool is doing. It's looking for uh, color similarities so that I can go and select. So it's getting a little bit confused in some of the lighter colored stones. So I had to go and clean some of that up. But ultimately, I was able to get um, see here basically what I did was um, I did a copy and paste so I was able to end up getting something like this with um, the joint and then I control clicked on that layer and I filled it in with a black okay and then I deselected that, went to filter, and did a little bit of a Gaussian blur on top of that just to soften it a little bit so it wasn't so harsh. And 
Then I put a white layer underneath. And really just ended up with something like this. Um, you could also take the opacity on that white layer and lower it. So you bring through some of the stone behind. Uh, now I did have to go in and kind of paint in some of the areas that were missing joints like this. And just kind of using a soft brush, um, I went around and fixed spots like this. And I ended up with this. So I think I actually desaturated. Um, so I saved out one version like this and then another version like this. And I basically then took those into um, crazy bump and I was able to run that straight through as if it was a diffuse right so then I was able to get a normal map that looked like this which was a lot more defined in the joints so we can see the difference now between the original and this one And straight away, you can tell the difference. And now I basically went and plugged in what we made there in Photoshop um, straight in the, as the height map. And let's turn that up and you can see the difference here. So we're getting a little bit of micro detail because of um, that original texture kind of showing through. If we would use a cleaner one without that texture coming through, you can see that that micro detail goes away. And we can adjust it a little bit better. So one thing I could do to get a little bit more um, micro detail would be to take the normal map that we created and let's overlay it on top of the original. And let's lower, let's just bring back some of that original detail. So it's not quite so smooth in there. And let's save that out. And you can see the difference there. So now we have um, the stones themselves don't look quite as flat. So we're getting some uh, indentation in the stones themselves. But now it's starting to look a lot nicer uh, as a displaced wall here. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, let me know what you think. 
And if that's helpful, until next time, have a good one.